couldn't find a thread up. Here we go. Less than bridge greater than less than bridge greater than don't ask easily googleable questions. Remember your audience here can't speak for all men or all women. Remember you don't speak for all men or all women. Less than bridge greater than less than bridge greater than stop asking if your penis is big enough. Less than bridge greater than less than bridge greater than go nuts. This seems stupid but I was talking to a guy on Tinder and he just keeps complimenting me every two or three replies. Compliment makes me feel like a dog he's praising or a vending machine he's putting praise coins in. I don't want to meet a guy who thinks it's absolutely amazing that I can't retain information I've learned. Not exaggerating I no longer want to meet him. Don't want to ghost either what's the kindest way to tell him I'm not interested and maybe give him a tip for future reference. It's Tinder, just unmatch him. There are lots of guys who seem to think that complimenting someone is flirting and therefore flirting is just paying compliments. You can't unteach that because their ideas of flirting are so far off base that they don't believe you. Be honest that him showering you with excessive compliments isn't making him look good and that it's off-putting to get praise on every facet of what you do. Or tell him bluntly that his method isn't working because it isn't give compliment receive relationship and it feels kind of creepy. Then unmatch him. It gives him a chance to figure out that whatever he's doing isn't normal and he should reconsider interaction. Thank you. I'll do that first thing in the morning, was just having trouble organizing my thoughts because when he isn't complimenting me, he is interesting and I kept hoping it would die down soon. No, I'll be direct with him, explain the problem, wish him the best going forward and I match him. Be honest that him showering you with excessive compliments isn't making him look good and that it's off-putting to get praise on every facet of what you do, or tell him bluntly that his method isn't working because it isn't give compliment, receive relationship and it feels kind of creepy, then unmatch him. It gives him a chance to figure out that whatever he's doing isn't normal and he should reconsider interaction. You're ready if you feel you want to. You're just being avoidant. I try not to ghost guys I initially planned to meet because that's rude and most people deserve at least an explanation. I don't want to start sounding like him but that's good of you and I respect it. How was it? Tell us details. Send a single honest message telling it weirds you out. Quote, vending machine he's putting praise coins in is pretty much his current strategy. Tell him this is what isn't working will make him adjust as he probably only does it because he thinks this is what you want. I get this isn't your responsibility to fix him but if you want to, tell him directly this is what's wrong. Maybe in a few years he will make someone else happy. How do you know when you're ready to start dating? I keep finding things small and big that I'm not happy with about myself. I keep thinking after I fix those I'll start but it takes a long time and I keep thinking of more things I want to fix. You're ready if you feel you want to. You're just being avoidant. How was it? Tell us details. Every time I see a discussion or advice on attracting women, one of the most common bits of wisdom is that you're supposed to be doing lots of things and leading a busy life with hobbies, friends, etc. Now that's all fine. I have no problem with that at all. But what I don't understand is, why would women want a man who does lots of stuff if they're just going to try to take him away from those things anyway? Do women all work in HR and recruitment or something? Quote, why would women want a man who does lots of stuff if they're just going to try to take him away from those things anyway? What? What don't you understand about that? It seems pretty straightforward English to me. You seem to be under the impression we want to take men from their hobbies. I mean, if you want to believe that, go ahead. But that ain't how it works. It is nice to date someone who has a life other than me. Quote, you seem to be under the impression we want to take men from their hobbies. I didn't say it want. I don't know if it's that you want to do it or it just happens anyway, but it's a very common occurrence. I've literally never known a man in a relationship whose wife GF wasn't trying to run his life. Have you considered finding a woman that's more compatible with you? I wouldn't date a girl that wouldn't walk 30 kilometers across mountains with me. Sure, it limits the dating pool a lot but it's hot when you find a girl that's into it. It's depressing meeting all the ones that fill a stricter criteria but aren't into you. Feels hopeless. Dot. There's never a shortage of women you'd find attractive, it's going the other way that it becomes a problem. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty much a hopeless romantic. A woman that I share interests with is 10x more attractive to me. Wait, wait, wait. So if a woman has the same interests as you, she's 10x hotter than you. If she doesn't have the same interest, she's not attractive. But in your world, regardless of hobbies and life, the woman will demand that you stop all of that. What? How does this make sense in your head? Two different people. Two different people. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty much a hopeless romantic. 
a woman that I share interests with is 10x more attractive to me. Dot, there's never a shortage of women you'd find attractive, it's going the other way that it becomes a problem. I thought the trick was to find a woman to do the things you already enjoy doing. So it's like normal except you have a nice girl you can hold hands with. Quote, you seem to be under the impression we want to take men from their hobbies. I didn't say it want. I don't know if it's that you want to do it, or it just happens anyway, but it's a very common occurrence. I've literally never known a man in a relationship whose wife GF wasn't trying to run his life. Quote, why would women want a man who does lots of stuff if they're just going to try to take him away from those things anyway? Missing the point this hard you are supposed to go to a hobby and meet people through that. You want to pick up tennis, meet another tennis player and then have her make you drop playing tennis. Use some common sense. How was it? Tennis details. Having a full, rewarding life that makes you happy will make you more attractive and help make a better first impression. Especially when you are still young it is also common to introduce each other to things, friends, activities, music, you name it and part of how fun the relationship is comes from what you do and discover together. Yeah it's true that especially with age this can become an issue, but people have conflicting interests that's life. This applies to men as well, loads of men would f asterisking love a tight fit girlfriend, but that doesn't mean they are happy when they want a leisurely Sunday morning f asterisk and she says an asterisk because she's off to the gym. And apart from that universally human, liking to have the perks but not the drawbacks element in most households men get out of the house more and put less time into parenting and chores, so yeah women can get resentful if they also want to go out with friends over the weekend rather than having a date night or taking the kids so she can catch up with friends. They're a matter of what you prioritize and time managing. It's not about men having hobbies being a bad thing in itself, not at all. If a partner actually does not like to see you enjoy yourself without him, that's abusive. Girls, do out of place random presents weird you out? I have this very good friend I have known for about a year and a half. She is moving away and I probably won't see her again even though she says she will come visit when she can. The relationship is strictly platonic and we are meeting with the group later and I was wondering if a small gift would be too weird. It is not anything big or anything, but it could be somewhere between completely meaningless and kinda of funny to really cute and something she would treasure depending on how she reacts to it. That's fine, no worries. Well brothers I broke it off with the girl I liked from Tinder after hearing how she casually blew a guy off Tinder it just crushed my heart a little. The worst was when I broke it off with her she couldn't have been sweater and kinda about it. Were you even dating? Not but I liked her and I'm new to dating so it was rough for me I only knew her for 9 days but she would send good morning texts and we talked all the time. Had sex and went on a date. Think I'm done with Tinder. Did she do that thing where her profile picks the study but she still writes on there that she only wants a relationship and isn't into hookups. It's Tinder, what did you expect? Did she do that thing where her profile picks the study, but she still writes on there that she only wants a relationship and isn't into hookups? Quote, recently starting going out for a drink or two every night only thing that has helped me cope a bit with my s asterisk high life for years now I'm not getting drunk, basically just sitting at a bar for a pint or two and enjoying the atmosphere is this really a bad idea like some people claim. It's the closest I've been to nice and comfortable contact in years, and people here are pretty nice, so I'm not so overly worried about being drugged or anything. Is it reasonably likely to actually meet people this way? Haven't had so much direct talk to anyone but this one gay guy, but it kinda seems like most people either doesn't care about girls here, or are married. I thought bars were a place to find singles but that doesn't seem to be the case here. I guess it depends on where the bar is and what type of place it is, not trying to boom you out here, but there's this bar across town from where I live. These days it's more marketed as a known for being more like a gastro bar, but when I was a young man it was well known for being the place to go and pick up cougars. Quote, the ones with lots of single early mid-twenties people are college party bossy feel way too out of place with college people. They are a bit too energetic. Alternatively you could go to nightclubs as well haven't been in one but I could barely hear people talk right outside and such loud music gives me a headache. I can deal with the more subdued music from the Irish bar near where I live. A gastro bar or gastro pub is kind of just a cross between a pub, a bar and a restaurant. Figuring out the exact nomenclature is fairly irrelevant, I was just trying to point out identifying what goes on at certain bars and all the types of crowds that they draw. Ah, uh, gotcha. I just don't have much else nearby, so I guess I'll just stick to this and hope something comes off of it. If nothing else, it is a nice atmosphere. 
quote. Uh, I'm not sure. F asterisk. Sorry. I meant if they're nice people and you aren't overly attractive, there is a good chance they won't care and just let you join in. The main issue comes if you are too pretty. Then they tend to become a bit weirder about it and you'll be kept at arm's length so they can try to get into your pants later. Lots of different type of bars to ones with lots of single early mid-twenties people are college party bars. Alternatively, you could go to nightclubs as well. Quote, the ones with lots of single early mid-twenties people are college party bars. They feel way too out of place with college people. They are a bit too energetic. Alternatively, you could go to nightclubs as well. Haven't been in one, but I could barely hear people talk right outside, and such loud music gives me a headache. I can deal with the more subdued music from the Irish bar near where I live. I uh, gotcha. I just don't have much else nearby, so I guess I'll just stick to this and hope something comes off of it. If nothing else, it is a nice atmosphere. Quote, every night, Jesus, what? No, don't go drinking every night, a pint or two. Even so, that's not good for you. What usually happens with regulars like that is that they're there for fun and friends, not laying it onto girls. They know full well they can't just do that for multiple reasons. One. They will scare off all of the new girls, turning it into a sausage fest too. They risk getting into trouble or being seen in a negative light by the other regulars, taking away the usual drinking spot. You should just get to know them. It will happen sooner or later if you keep coming around, and the fact that a gay guy approach you shouldn't be weird. After all, he can do so without seeming like he is just trying to get your panties off. The rest will likely follow sooner or later, as long as you don't seem like someone who wants to be left alone. Are you that nun who asks where to find people to talk to? If you are, go sit at a table next time and see if you can get someone to welcome you in to sit. If they're nice people and aren't overly attractive, there is a good chance they won't care and just let you join in. Most if not all socializing here is done through food. I am currently doing intermediate fasting so basically I can eat lunch with my co-workers and then cheat on the diet a few times when someone wants to eat dinner with me, but now I've started dating this girl and I want to take her out and I don't want to give up on my diet and get fat again. Do any girls know a way to solve this issue? We have made dinner at home a few times so she could eat and I just sat and talked to her but I don't know if this gets weird after a while. I could also just do something else while she eats but I am used to being gathered around food. Also, she can't join me on the diet for health reasons. Do any girls know how to fix this? You don't have to eat where you're going to. Intermittent fasting is kinda s asterisk anyway. Try to exercise more often daily 1 hour strength, 1 hour cardio, and eat fist sized portions of relatively healthy food every 3 hours, while also taking fat burner supplements. Good for you. That doesn't really answer my question though. Eating at a restaurant means having a light dinner, I suppose I should just have a smaller late lunch the days where I am eating with her and then try to make the window work that way, but then I can't be social at work those days. My goal isn't losing weight anymore, I just don't want to feel bloated from all the food people usually eat, I could always lose weight but I am in normal BMI range and pretty happy with my body. It's only weird if you make act awkward about it. I promise you that every fit guy has had to go through this and just suck it up, deal with people's s asterisk if they had to. Quote, going to a restaurant and only order one dish is super weird, isn't it? Not at all. I've been on numerous dates where I had something to drink, because he picked a wrong place. I have a gluten allergy, so some places just have nothing that I can really eat. Usually works out fairly well, and guy seems to like me being a cheap date, though I haven't quite been allowed to split the bill yet. If you don't mind, then the staff usually doesn't either. You might get a slightly bewildered waiter once in a while, but who cares, they've seen much weirder things. I've worked as a waiter and the best costumer is the one that says little to nothing at all, sit quietly and gives a fair tip. This is a rare occurrence as people in general seems to be a faster asking insane. If you want to lose faith in humanity be a waiter at a restaurant, bartender or a cashier at a grocery store. I know this is beside the point, but I needs to be said. Yeah, my main reason for often not ordering is that I have seen one too many r asterisk at Karen's flip out over some dumb dietary requirements the waitress has to deal with. Much easier for me to just skip rather than be obnoxious to the waiter about my allergies. I've worked at a hotel, while I don't know exactly how waiters have it, I have a pretty good idea. People can be ridiculously demanding over the most stupid things. Lol, we all know the Karens of the world, but how are they made? Why is it always some middle-aged short-haired woman with really unreasonable demands, entitlements? Have lunch and a light early dinner. Skip breakfast. I lost 80 pounds like that. Good for you. That doesn't really answer my question though. 
Eating at a restaurant means having a light dinner. I suppose I should just have a smaller late lunch the days where I am eating with her and then try to make the window work that way. But then I can't be social at work those days. My goal isn't losing weight anymore. I just don't want to feel bloated from all the food people usually eat. I could always lose weight, but I am in normal BMI range and pretty happy with my body. I kinda like seeing the trope of women eating just a salad at a restaurant now suddenly makes sense to guys. Weight control is difficult if you want to keep a slim body. So just get small portions in social settings and eat slow. Ninja was typing this out as well. Girls do it all the time, pick something light and small, or skip entirely. Most people want mind, and the restaurant staff will only ever really care if you both skip food to have drinks instead. Learn to manage your calories properly without doing fasting. Count calories, don't be afraid of eating out here and there, but if it's going to be 3 plus times a week then simply plan for it in your calorie intake and exercise routine. Guys would you be open to date a Zoroastrian girl? Quote, theology, ever know? Why? Because that's admitting you believe in magic. And anyone who believes in magic belongs at the special table. One past and all years begin with a D take note brainlet. How does that relate to the previous post? Orange can be a color and a fruit. See what I did there? Yes, my statement is true too. Why are people being so confident in their our asterisk-ation today? Atheism is the easier thing to be confident about these days actually. Mine is the contrarian point of view, but feel free to belittle it, because that is what is supposed to happen. Evolution has never been proven BTW choke on that. Week B8 M8. Reddit are atheism 2.5 million members Reddit are Christianity 223k members and no evolution has no evidence pointing to the development of humans really. Go win the an asterisk L and prove it. Week B8 M8 go to YouTube if you want to argue about religion and evolution. I hope you all realize that this guy is right. The number of Redditors on a board prove a point about wider society beyond any doubt without the need for scrutiny. Not only that, but evolution is just a theory. Like gravity, or the shape of the Earth. Gravity and the shape of the Earth are proven, natural selection is proven, but evolution number. Quote, creationists are allowed to use the internet unsupervised. I don't know the truth, but I stand by the truth of what is possible and so far that is an asterisk. Oh yeah, thing knows this could be a simulation or aliens or a thing maybe some epic we lost a long time ago. But pretending you know the truth when it isn't known is foolish. I'll take a mythology over a hyped and soulless pontification any day. You don't know the truth so you make up a truth of your own to stick to. That is some next level stupidity. By that sentiment alone you should have the intellectual capability to question yourself. I've done my research. I merely tell you what I have learned. If you want to call me stupid, go ahead. I was like you once. You have done the horrible job at researching, and I advise you to keep at it. So just for reference so we can get image of your situation making this what it is. What's your age and living condition? Work hobbies? Quote, it isn't proven, it is all just theories. I sometimes forget how absurdly stupid and ignorant people here can be. I always hope it is just trolls, but I'm not even sure anymore. The line does get blurred quite often, but either way the reactions are the same. You're either going to abuse them or ignore them. It's a sign of an educational system that has failed. And that's sad, although the bar to come of as intellectually superior is real low, so that's something I guess. It's a fundamental misunderstanding of science. And don't forget that the vast majority of religious people are brought into the churches at impressionable ages. Stamping out critical thinking early on can be very difficult to undo later in life. Not being part of the conversation so far, but I always find it interesting that people get so hung up on these things. To me at least who grew up with an odd very religious grandma who even despite the rest of my mostly Christian family clung to Greek mythology like nothing else mattered. Her thought process was always that, of course the gods didn't literally create and maintain everything, that would be absurd, but who is to say there isn't gods out and about? Basically, let science explain what it can and then let us fill in the blanks and give us supernatural aspects of something we can believe in for the rest. We don't know everything, there are still a lot of things science can't explain or fix, and sometimes it helps having something to cling on to when the doctors tell you that science has failed and they cannot help you anymore. This is all religion is though. People in power made up answers to questions that the peasants kept asking. The fact is that science can explain everything, even if we haven't looked into it yet, and the only real difference is that some people are incapable of conceiving of the idea that the universe wasn't created for the benefit, which is pure arrogance. 
you're as asterisk ooming that everyone is discerning. This is not the case. Some people can't discern at all. You can't reason with those people because they don't have the ability to reason. Rather, such an individual wants and feels, then uses a crude form of logic to rationalize those desires. Sure, but then it is up to us to educate or we will be dragged down just the same. I'm not saying a discussion here will lead to anything and some people are truly lost. But it is up to us to set in place our educational system that won't be taken over by religion or political greed. Just look at the history of Middle East for proof of consequence. Or currently in the US who follows the same path. It's hard to look at this and not be horrified for our future. Quote, the fact is that science can explain everything blatantly wrong. We have several unsolved mysteries science still can't explain. And I'm not sure your idea of religion being arrogance is a good jab, when religion at the end of the day puts us as the literal caged animals by creators who often doesn't give a s asterisk, compared to science fa asterisk s who think we are the pinnacle of intelligence and are the superior life form who fully understands all the mysterious of the universe. And hell, there is still the theoretical idea that the gods of old are real, in the sense that they did literally create a lot of the world we know, but rather than being gods, they are merely aliens who helped bring up humanity, one way or the other. It should be easy as all of science back that notion. And evolution has been proven, that's the consensus as all the data confirms the theory. I know that's a lot of big words and tough to get your head around. And I'm not saying that to s asterisk on you, most people deal with this on some level. None of this has to make sense to you for it to be real. The universe doesn't change according to your belief system, that's why religion has a hard time staying relevant and often is reborn into something new. Usually in times of hardship or lack of education. Show me the proof. I'll wait while you desperately scramble. Google the library. A teacher. I know Netflix H is asterisk. Oh, me pretty decent education series and they're entertaining too. The burden of proof is on you when the scientific consensus speaks for itself. Well, I'm glad you're no longer in Barra's asterisk head about it. Quote, all years begin with a D, still believing in magic because dumb foo asterisk s 2000 years ago thought it was real, and literally killed people who were smart enough to call them out on the bull sh asterisk. Sir I suppose you don't mind Hitler, either. Oh no, I just realized you're not saying random facts. Your point is that religion has to be real because most of the world use the Gregorian calendar. Ha ha, that is some top tier r asterisk -ation. That W is asterisk oh dumb it went right over my head, I'm truly amazed. I don't mean to tip my fedora too hard here, but it has always been abundantly clear to me that religion doesn't make much sense. To me, it doesn't say anything good about a person if they readily believe and participate in any kind of organized religion. I'm not super unreasonable about it or anything. Like, the reality is that I'd date a girl who claimed to be religious so long ago asterisk he didn't really practice and never expected me to go to church. If she claimed to be Catholic but only went to East M as asterisk I could tolerate that. Quote, if she claimed to be Catholic but only went to East Emma's asterisk I could tolerate that not wanting a submissive tradcat housewife. There is zero evidence in favor of religion being true, whereas there is plenty of demonstrative evidence that scientific discoveries are true, and those largely rule out the existence of anything supernatural even without having to disprove such an existence, religion served a very important societal function in its heyday. All they have are theories though. Quote, it isn't proven, it is all just theories. I sometimes forget how absurdly stupid and ignorant people here can be. I always hope it is just trolls, but I'm not even sure anymore. Not Follow the rest of the conversation between those two. The religious guy is either a troll, or genuinely too stupid to get through to. Either way you're wasting your time. It's very odd, but no, all religion and superstition is a huge red flag to someone's intellect. I'll skip. Now how are you going to turn someone into a sex slave when their religion forbids slavery? Some guys would. I have a literal altered wartimus, I am struggling with both lung cancer and leukemia, and I am a four-tenths at best, and I can get guys if I just equip my spine and ask them out first. Just don't be a f asterisk king nut job about your religion, bring it up only if you have to, and never act as if he is supposed to buy into your beliefs, and be ready to make jokes about it. Take it as asterisk carelessly as you want, if you can't take jokes directed at it, you need to reevaluate for life choices. Nothing is more off-putting than someone having an uncommon belief while being stupidly defensive about it. Been there, learned that lesson the hard way.
Don't waste your time making that mistake. I go through a ton of guys before I find someone who doesn't mind my weird as asterisk religion. So don't be a b asterisk and give up because one guy shows disapproval. Girls, do you have some female equivalent of the bro code? And I mean that in the same sense that the bro code loosely applies to all men and not just your immediate friends.